Yeah, well, let's just dive in, right? I mean, let's just go into yeah. kind of the base uh, concepts here that we're going to be talking about. Um, what I'm going to be doing is Adam and I are going to be framing this up front, talking through some of the environmental aspects of this, then going into, obviously, the creation of an app, uh, and then also then doing some more advanced things. And Adam's got, obviously, the, the Power Virtual Agents, if I remember correctly, um, that we're able to dive in a little bit more with that as well. So let's this this for anyone that's in the audience right now, you don't need to know code. I mean, if you have a team site, if you have teams already created, you could do this if you want to. Okay, so it's entirely up to you so, on how deep you want to get with this. So maybe that's important to actually call out here too. Is you know this we, is we, more end we, user, even more right. We have been speaking in terms of, or you know, like with the assumption that many viewers here they've been in the power platform. They're deep in the toolbox. They're elbow deep in the toolbox. But uh, for those that might be joining up and going, ah, power platform stuff, not fully, you know, we're not there yet, or I haven't been hands on with it, you know, just know that um, we all know what Power BI is, we should at this point. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, we've got this full automation engine, Power Automate, or Flow, as it was called. Um, we now have Power Apps um, and Power Virtual Agents, the last leg of the Power Platform stool, um, as branded anyway. You know, we've got these really uh, capable no cliffs tools that Microsoft has built underneath all of their business applications. So, you know, you've got your first party apps like D365 Business Central or sales or field service or supply chain management. So, um, you know, everything's been lifted up and there's this now now we have this common language and this common glue and all of these tools to build really, you know, uh, powerful solutions. Um, across fences and you know between um, different tools and, and front-end applications so uh, there's this whole robust suite of tools that we can use to build line you know line of business apps now that's the power platform and that comes with cds that comes with environment management there's a ton of stuff to unpack and talk about there so that's the precedent that's the history that's where we're coming from and today um, we're now talking about some of those tools some of those pieces um, from this really, you know, um, it's just highly, highly capable tool set, some of those pieces, bringing them in and plunking them into teams and using teams as more of that platform and using the teams experience as more of a driver to define and build and refine these solutions. So that's just a, a, a one minute long way of, of saying, hey, this is why we're here and this is what we're talking Rad's about. Rad's late to the party. party. Welcome, Rob, Bill. Thank you guys for joining. He made it. He made it. Awesome. Like All right. It. So let's keep going. Now we can continue. Now we can continue, right? That's that's we were delaying for for Rob. So let's yep. let's go through like just really simply here. So a lot of you have teams. Let's start at the teams level with this. As you can see on the far left here, I'm part of a lot of different teams. A lot of these are test teams that we're doing as we go through our process. But really, how do you get your feet wet with this? How do you how do you understand the concepts and actually just start building an application, right? And before we showed you, I think in our CDS and CDMO my session that we did, we did this whole documentation on the environment spin up and all that kind of stuff. And it's huge, right? Well, this is what you can do now. This is this is where it becomes more of an end user tool. So I want to create a team. I'm going to go to my team and I'm going to say create team right here. In my create team, I could create it from a template if I wanted to. We're just going to create run from scratch as an example. I'm going to click on my create from scratch. And right now, I'm going to make this a private team so that only I um, can manage this basically at this point. Other people can't see this information. And we're going to call this, uh, I don't know, Scrappy Do or something like that is our new team. And we could do any name. You guys get that, right? This is pretty basic functionality in terms of generating teams. Now, people at the Stone Ridge organization, make sure that you're not doing client sites like this because we have a whole process around this, obviously, right? So, but the point here, created a team. I've got my team set up inside of it now. I want to collect data, right? At some point in time, I want to collect information and then store it and then represent it inside of this team site. Because really what I want to do is I want a cool tab up here to be able to then interact with it. And in the past, what we were able to do is we were able to click on the add a tab, for example, and then add all these different applications, right, that are inside of here that then show as a tab inside of the team. And really the concept of a team, you know, as you dig into it deeper and deeper, is that a team has a site 
it has a channel or multiple channels that are related to it and then it integrates with all the other office or microsoft technologies so it integrates with uh, excuse me, the OneDrive. It actually integrates with Planner. It integrates with Tasks. Um, it integrates with all these different technologies and then basically makes one presentation layer for you. And then it also integrates with Dynamics and Power Platform. So in the past, you were able to go, for example, to this Power Apps and click on the Power Apps inside of here and then add it into basically the, uh, the environment. And when you added it into your team site, the big difference in here is that you were always able to take a team site and then basically add a Power App to it. We've always had that capability of that and then also adding Power BI to it. But you needed then to have access to what this app accessed for um, information into its common data service or to its connections that are related to it. But down here, you can see that there's create an app in Power Apps. This is the new functionality that's been added. Um, and basically, if I click on that, what it does in the background here is that it actually spins up a common data service environment in the background. So it's actually provisioning a full CDS environment. We're going to talk about the full aspect in a second here, but it's creating then that database in the back end that's directly then related to this particular team. So Kind of crazy, huh? Right, Adam? Like, I, hey, yep. Scott. Yeah. Hey, Scott. I got a question. Yeah, I got for an you. answer, hopefully. I may have said this on the last confab to a degree or some, you know, some flavor of it. For that, I apologize if that's yep. the case. But did you ever imagine, as uh, a consultant in the dynamic space, Business Central, FinOps, whatever, did you ever imagine a day where we would have a platform like Teams, an experience like Teams? and power platform tooling like we're seeing here two clicks have a full environment to work with you're going to go build a pixel perfect application to live inside this crazy thing we call microsoft nope. teams did you ever in your wildest dreams think that this was going to be a part of your job rec or day or day to day or week nope. to week no nope. my business systems we've always tackled it in the classical way right way right where we separate erp from crm and now we're actually getting into the conversations yeah right only in my dreams only in my dreams now we're getting into the conversation now of using teams as the front end like like we're going further than that in some of our demonstrations and some of the concepts that we're showing because organizations that adopt teams have a way to take unstructured data like files and documents and SharePoint and versioning and all these different cool technologies there, but then also use that in the business process to support then dynamics as well. So ERP or CRM or field service or whatever the business process uh, subject matter is. So it's like you said, Adam, it's, it's, awesome i mean it's it's a different way of thinking though and a lot of people um i will even say even our consultants right i mean this is this is a concept shift because you go from using for example if you lived in dynamics 365 ce or sales or crm as it was called in the past yeah you know, adam you address everything through that tool set right XRM. exactly it was it was it was using and that that's what really innovated channel partners um way back you know in the 4.0 2011 days so we're talking a decade or better i mean before that even um but you know xrm this concept of anything relationship management or extended relation the the x can mean multiple things but um using these tools using the 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 low code low code no code is a a you know a, a mantra and basically a microsoft religion at this point it's been there for 20 years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it's been there. Like, if you've been in the CRM world, you know, you you were using Microsoft CRM. You were using dynamic CRM as a low-code, no-code development framework. Yeah. You were building custom data structures and relationships and automation and, applica you know, the application front end. That's really what we have with model-driven apps today. Like, the application front end remained the same, but you're building point solutions in line, line of business applications in a custom way using the, de the the dynamic CRM tools. And that's what we have, and that's what Microsoft, you know, realizing the value that's there, realizing that, and that word is huge, value, because they, they realized that using something like that, using dynamic CRM with the tooling that it provides as soon as you turn those keys, um, your time to value, 
you don't have to go through custom application development for six months to get something proofed, to get something deployed. You can go in and start building and start proofing right away. There's, it's all served up. So that's kind of where we came from. And it's just cool to see that level of evolution, bringing it to today, we problem solve in, in a much deeper way. We problem solve, instead of thinking in CRM or ERP or whatever terms, we problem solve around the problems themselves with this very deep toolbox. And it's- It is much better than the old now I'm getting, I'm getting yeah, no, but right I mean, it, so it's a, a yeah, it's a very valid point, though. I mean, because you know, you think about you go build a house, you've got hammers, you've got saws, you've got all these different types of tools. Then you go and buy a new tool, and you can use that new tool obviously for that job, right? Same exact experience from our, uh, you know, from our perspective is that now we have so much more access to be able to get to this this information and and actually provide solutions and and make it more where, for example, end users can interact interact with it, right? That's the exciting part for me. It's like you can iterate on development styles, schemas. Like I was talking to Bill today about, you know, uh, extending, uh, for example, a base, uh, a, a base data type inside of FinOps and, you know, understanding the concepts. Cause I know that as a developer in the past, I understand the progression with it, but you bring that to an end user and you're like, I did that. What leaves nodes, you know, how does all that work type of a thing? This is the next evolution that then also we as developers have access to as well. So we're not leaving behind then all these development capabilities. An example would be Flow Logic Apps. You can take a, a Logic App and basically write it all in, in code if you want to, and then reflect that inside of Logic Apps visually as well. So you've got a lot of capabilities still from the other perspective, from the enterprise perspective with it. Um, one, one thing I wanted to highlight though, so we went through that, we talked a lot, it created the application in the background. Well, what, what happened in the background here? So if we take a quick look here, um, one thing I wanted to, to just refresh inside of here, this is our admin powerplatform.com. This is our, our admin um, one that's inside of here. <laughs> Noel is following along, it looks like. Noel, that is awesome, I love this. Um, so um, we can see my new team site that I generated um, is the Scrappy Do team site inside of here, right? And if I go ahead and go to Scrappy Do and we take a look at this, we have our type of Microsoft Teams that's inside of here. So there is a differentiator between your typical um, sandbox and production common data service environments. And in here, we have then a type called Microsoft Teams. Now, good things that we do have, we have the ability to do back backups of this as well. Um, and then we also have resources that we can relate to it. But you can see I don't really have a way to add solutions to it, right? So this is probably one of the big differentiators I just wanted to identify right away is that even though it's a common data service environment that's being created, it's not the same as a full-fledged production or sandbox environment. And to even highlight that, like if I go up to my Power Apps at the top up here and I look at my environment list that's over here on make.powerapps.com, which is the classical way that we go in to make Power Apps, there is no scrappy do inside of here. There's no for pure aeronautics or Noel, for example, inside of here as well, um, because it is not accessible to make power apps then from the power app platform maker, from the designer, this, this designer in here. You have to use the designer, for example, inside of um, Teams to be able to add tables and add functionality to that common data service environment. And I think that's a big differentiator that I wanted to identify. Adam, thoughts? Yeah, no, it is. And I, I wanted to make the point that, you know, this, it, it's not, it's not wholly self-contained. Um, just because we can't scale, we can't scale, if this makes sense, down and in to a, uh, a Teams environment with broader power platform tooling, that does not at all preclude us from scaling out and up to broader power platform usage you know if we wanted to tap into flow or other tools um the solution thing that's a big that's a big shift you know uh, we're very used to um working with you know and packaging up and, and having everything built on solutions so little different um but we still can you know if we're if we're going if we're looking from the um oakdale components and oakdale the apps and the bots looking from that vantage point outward we definitely can scale out yep. and up um, so I wanted yep. to make that make that comment that, um, you know, d depending on where you're standing and how you're looking at it, there are just some of these considerations that 
you know, Scott is... Yeah, and I would also say, you know, think about it this way. If you're going to do, uh, if, if you're going to do a... Uh, Dataflex slash uh, the common data service for teams integration here for a team. Um, you probably want to do it where it is not enterprise focused, right? I, I, I do, you you want to be able to learn and understand and create applications and experiment with them. And I think a team site is perfect for that because you can create your own self-contained little environment that everyone keeps on asking for, um, even in our organization, to be able to create data and I interact with it. But remember, when you do that, you're, you're creating an environment that is separate then from the, the production or sandbox environments. So if you need data that's going to influence other teams or or even the organization's business process well you probably want to back up and just re-examine you know the usage of this tool to address that particular requirement that would be to me where you define that line with it but let's say you want to just create like well in this example i want an account inquiry screen in my team site that uh, i can interact with for example inside of here well you can do that. You can, you could have like, we could call this the, uh, um, I don't know, we'll call it account information is my name of my new app and I can save it inside of here. And when I create that account information, um, maybe I, I want to keep track of um, some of the software uh, account logins that I have. So I can, for example, inside of here, create a new table. Um, and I'm going to call this table, we'll call it, uh, I don't know, the logins or something like that. I mean, you can figure out how you want to do that. But really what's happening here, you can see when I actually expanded the advanced settings, this create table action is the same action in the common data service that when you go to the entities and you say create a new entity, it's got a huge pane that pops up with all these additional values. It's just a really pared down value of that, right? And the next step here is where things get crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm over. I'm yeah. overblowing that. Uh, it's just a new. It's a new experience to build. Uh, to build an yeah. entity. To build a table, and it's much more. You know, it's ex Excel like, I guess you could say. So we're you know introducing columns and our attributes and types and everything, but more in that in that row column format. Um, so it's 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 very intuitive. I will say, and Scott, if you feel the same way, support it. If you don't quash it, stand that's it your, down, that's but, um, but you know, I think this is actually probably an easier entry point for makers. Um, I absolutely agree. Potentially, if if they're if they're accustomed to Excel, and yeah, to me, this is just a little bit more um, palatable. It's a little easier to start getting hands on with if you're brand new to everything. If you just threw this tool at somebody and said, "Hey, go figure it out," I think this is probably an easier path. Um, for somebody to pick it up and go and start, you know, um, start building right away versus like pure CDS going into the, the big yeah, shebang. Yeah, exactly. And really what we're doing here is just, I'm just showing an example here, obviously. URL, maybe I would want that data type to be different. But even then, as you can see, as I'm building this out, um, what I can also do, for example, after the fact is also edit it, right? I can go ahead and make changes to it. Actually, I want it to be URI instead of URL because maybe I've got, you know, a different prefix. Maybe it's a DFS file share, for example, that you go to with it. Um, I can move things around inside of this designer. Um, I can add different types of data types, like an email, uh, a phone number, or anything else like that. But the really cool thing about it is that you can actually, on the fly here, uh, new record one, right? And then I can go, for example, www.google.com, and I can say S for peer, and password is that is my password. So I'm actually entering in data into the common data service as I'm actually um, designing this table, which is also very, very different, right? We we haven't had this type of a visual designer like this. We set up usually the table first, and then we use uh, Excel or data flows or something to load that data or even build a form basically to be able to go through the mm -hmm. data entry with it. Or do the work for us, I think. Um... Ratty wags in the chat auto generate test yeah. data. You know, we, we we've got tools to do some of that lifting in the you know in true CDS in the in full yep. CDS. But this is to me this is just um, <clears throat> doubling down on that ease of entry factor. Yep. 
you know, for, for a lot of people, seeing is believing and very visual. And I'm one of those people for sure. So being able to structure this, but also then get to data entry and seeing how it is going to live side by side, um, that can be important for a lot of people that are just jumping exactly. in. Exactly. So I'm just going to close out of it just to highlight that. And you can see now on the far right here that it actually added a common data service entity inside of here and then reflected that entity that is now visible and accessible inside of this application, right? So I've built a login app. Now, and it came with a nice template that started with it. Um, really, if we take a look at this, if you're used to Power Power Apps. Um, a couple things that we want to talk through with this because these th these are really important points, and a lot of people don't understand this when they're creating the app. But um, the point here is that on the far left on our tree view, this shows us the hierarchy basically of a Power App, right? Where you've got your screen control. And then on your screen, you've got a container and then you've got a divider in this example and then a left container, right? So it's like imagine taking PowerPoint and then building boxes and then doing above or below, right? You're, you're basically setting up your hierarchy that's related to it. Well, the key thing here is that when we look at um, the, the controls that are in here, these are all standard controls. So this one, for example, is actually, um, as you can see here, the edit form. This is the edit for version of it. On the edit form as well, then, these are data cards. So these are fields, basically, that we added to it. And we can actually go into here, and if we had additional fields, click on the edit fields and use that same standard functionality then as well um, to be able to generate that information. Um, and the reason I'm showing this is because it's just standard Power Apps capabilities. If you know how to use Power Apps right now, you can take all the different controls by going through and then adding, for example, a new component inside of here, a new screen or a component that's over here, uh, and then use that. And it's really important to, to uh, basically identify this because there's there's advanced concepts that we haven't even covered in Confab yet that we need to at some point, such as components that you can share then across the applications. An example would be maybe you want a nice menu bar um, and you want to be able to navigate off of it and you put that up in the top screen here as a component. That way, when you make a change to the component, it updates it on every single screen in the background. So there's all the advanced capabilities of Power Apps um, are really exposed inside of here um, as well. So just a really big uh, thing to note. Now, the other thing I wanted to just highlight here as well as we're going through this, obviously, is the ability then to save it and preview it and interact with it. So if I go ahead and save this, it's going to save it the two power apps, basically. Um, I'm going to go ahead and then press preview for it. Great, we've got our preview inside of here. I can interact with it, create a new record, uh, put this as John Doe record, put it as, I don't know, uh, Stone bridge software.com as for peer my password whatever it is and then save it away as an example and now we've got a new record that came into here right so these everyone shows this right on how you can do that i guess the key thing here is that once you've gone through and developed your app how you want to make it um really what you can do here on the top right is take this and then publish it to your team sites so if i click on publish to teams inside of here i can click next and basically, I'm able to go through and then select the environment that I want to use this particular application in. So it is in the Scrappy-Doo right here. Uh, if I go ahead and click on the Add App inside of here and save and close it, when I now go back into that team site, um, I should have access um, to that uh, particular application. So if I go back into Teams inside of here and we go into our Scrappy-Doo, we see we have the account information here. And if I click on that, boom, we should now have that Power App that's accessible inside of here. So this is very generic, right? Super easy, super fast. Noel is doing it in the background. That's awesome. I mean, you anyone could do this. And you can go further than that too. An example would be go ahead and create a Power App, for example. Don't post it to the channel. We want to create a new Power App inside of here. And in this Power App, what I want to do is I really want to link it to an existing data structure. That's our company data structure from the team. So I want to build the app because I don't want that shared with the organization. I want it in the team, but I want to be able to access data externally. So you don't need to just store data in the common data service. So this would be like, for example, an account listing. And if I cl click on save to it, by default, it wants me to add a table here, right? It's really saying, 
you know, you need to create some data structures that are related to this. Well, I can also, for example, click on the add data, go ahead and say change my environment to um, we're going to use our pre-sales demos, which are like production environments, the CE FinOps one, for example, select that, then go ahead and select the accounts inside of here. And now I've basically created a really nice, simple account editing screen that has a data source inside of here that I can then take and then expose it then inside of the team site. Um, so here is, for example, then that accounts table with all the information that's related to it that I can then use, save it to teams and then basically interact with it from a different data source. So this is looking at a Dynamics 365 sales environment to get that information. And you can add many different data sources. And so let's let's go to the ultimate of this, meaning how far can you go with this? Um, and really, it's kind of up to your imagination. And this is a different different concept compared to where people are coming from within ERP and CRM to an extent where you have structured layouts that tell you exactly how you build a form, right? When you add the control to it, for example, um, you don't have the ability in Business Central, as an example, to tell where you want that exactly to be on the form. But these are Canvas apps, and that's a key differentiator here too. They're not model-driven apps. These are Canvas apps. And what that means then is I can do things like this. So I took one of the uh, demo accounts that we had um, and in my general page here, I'm going to go into my issue reporting as an example inside of here. Now, the only indicator really that you have that this issue reporting is a power app, as you can see here, is those front loading screens. I'm not joking. This is a power app. It, I mean, the layout, like you look at it when I'm interacting with it. If I want to view the issues, for example, if I click on back, if I report an issue as an example. If I say I go ahead and select an issue type and I say it's going to be, uh, we've got a dirty car, Adam. Um, this is a problem. We need to clean it, right? And I'm going to submit the issue for it then inside of here. Um, basically, inside of Teams, I've gone through and done an issue and reported it. And then inside of here, I've got issues that are now visible for me to interact with. And then also because this Power App integrated with Planner, I can see, for example, then in Planner, that particular issue has been generated inside of here. So that way, if I have other users that are not in that team, but may have ex access to the Planner, for example, I can assign people and then interact with them. And the super cool thing about this is that these particular applications as well, if you want to. So if I want to go into Power Apps over here and I want to see how did Microsoft do that? Like how did they take the theme and then make it so that that theme is automatically applied based upon my visual theme inside of here? What you can do is you can click on that application inside of here and then it will load up the Power App Designer and you can then use that app really as kind of a base for you to start off of and build out what you want basically from there. And I think this is Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is this has to do with the introduction of fluid UI components, yep. right? So you, you can like there's this, you know, UI framework that Microsoft uses for teams. So like we're going to be able to or we can build apps, point applications, whatever um, with a with the user experience, like the process and the attributes and the data structure and all these different things. Um, and not really have to worry too much about that pixel perfect development and, you know, really throw our weight there. Microsoft is, again, serving up these ready to go tools now with a front end framework. So we, we can have buttons and fields and layouts uh, in our custom applications that look awesome and have that unified experience with the Microsoft tools and applications. And we don't it's set it and forget it. We don't have to do it. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to play with formatting or, um, you know, sizing, right sizing, coloration, anything like that. Uh, we can use that that fluid UI framework. We can use what Microsoft already has baked into this to really make the front end of this, make the UI pretty pristine and snappy and nice. Yep. And so I mean, this is the other thing then to note with it. And this is kind of my last point that I wanted to make, Adam. And then we've got to go to you. Um, you know, obviously, this is an example of an app that we created that we're interacting with then from a team's perspective, right? And interacting with it. Um, and inside of your, once again, same concepts, 
you can do lots and lots of lines of code if you want to as well. So set, setting styles and things of that nature within it. I mean, we said low code, no code, right? You can develop apps with no code, but if you want to use formulas to drive more advanced functionality, obviously you can do that as well. And that's a good way, for example, to drive theming and coloring and scheming and things of that nature. And, and the reason I mention that is because as an end user starts simple, but then the sky's really the limit. You can get to some pretty advanced applications that you can generate inside of here um, by using then more code, for example, with it. But here's the caveat that I wanted to get across as kind of my final point. When you generate an app inside of Teams, when you do that build app, you can see here that it adds a little component basically in your, your hierarchy with it. Um, this means then, as you saw when I did the preview with it, if I'm trying to play around with it, you can see the app only is supported in Microsoft Teams. So when you develop an application for Teams for these sites, they are designed to be integrated very tightly then with Teams. And this is a, a good thing and a bad thing. Adam and I talked a little bit before the, the stream of saying, you know, we showed, for example, the ability to take an app, put it in Power BI, and then use that app somewhere else as well and not have to worry about where we came in with it. Like we had accessibility anywhere that we wanted. Um, this is one area, Adam, I think Microsoft could improve off of is figuring out a way to make it so that you can pass um, basically parameters to the application or a state of saying, I was called from Teams or I was called from Power BI instead of making it so that you have to develop a whole new application um, if you want to basically uh, use it outside of Teams. To me, this, this further demonstrates and stresses the point that Scott made earlier about make sure that you're pre-planning, yep. make sure that you understand your user base, make sure you, you know how these users are going to be accessing these apps, what it's really intended for. So all of that analysis, pre-planning, BA work, um, lean into that because as these you know, there will be gaps between Project Oakdale, this development cycle, and true CDS, and uh, maybe an enterprise scenario or something like that. So, you know, really, really understand the heart of your requirements, your needs. And this is super preachy, so I'll, I apologize and I'll stop. It, but it may, it's I, huge. I, that will only it will only do you a yep. service. So, you know, if if and where this makes sense, do it. It's awesome. It's great. But just make sure that those lines are drawn for your organization uh, before jumping in full force and putting your chips on something that. Oh crap! We've got a gap yep. here. And um, reach out to us. Ask us. So. We'll give we'll give you the input with it. I mean, we'll we'll let you know where where we want to use this tool as much as possible, obviously, and we want you to do it yep. too. And great thing about it, you don't have to spend money with Stone Ridge in a lot of ways to to build it. And that's a positive thing. We want to be part of the harder uh, business challenges, obviously, that you're facing as well. So, um, other thing, yep. then, go ahead, Adam. I know we got a time. I want to keep you uh, so you can show the bots because they're cool. Yeah. Are you ready to present? I, I think so, but first let's shoot to Marcus for Power BI. Marcus for Power BI. Thank, Thank you, Marcus. You, Marcus. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank Mike, you so wait much. It. That was compelling. That may have been the most compelling piece of this entire confab. Yeah. If for, if for any confab, really. <laughs> um, that was heavy. Marcus, stuff. poor Marcus. He's going to be sick. <laughs> All right, let me know when you got right. your screen shared. I'll, I'll flip it over. Enough, enough of this. Uh, I have started to share. I do not see it yet. I see it now. Well, you were kind of just, just doing the initial presentation. So, Bill, um, so does FNO security flow into this if, as you don't want to expose data um, that the user could not see in FNO? Um, it does. Like the connectors that you can set up with it um, when you're accessing then the entity store, um, for example, if you're going directly and using the FinOps connector, um, the security model that is used, it's, is, it's inherited, right? So the same with the common data service when I access all those accounts, um, obviously, I'm an admin, so I had privileges to do it. Now, there does, like Bill, a very valid point would be, like if we start looking at Azure Data Lake or external sources where we're taking that information and putting it other places um, that are not managed then by, for example, the web services inside of finance and operations or finance slash supply chain management, um, you know, we'd probably have to develop some type of security then around that. And you can either do that in the data lake from permissions in terms of uh, uh, Azure Synapse and SQL on demand, or you can actually use um, file based permissions as well to drive that. So there's a there's a multitude of options that we have to be able to drive the security. Go ahead, Adam. Sorry. Yep. We can see everything. Yep, I all, think so. I see. Yep. Square. All right. So um, 
a couple of teams to show. I'm going to probably skim through a little bit just for the sake of time. But, you know, we, we cover the Power Apps. So this is the Oakdale process. This is the Oakdale Power Apps uh, development. Um, I have that anchored. I have that pinned to uh, teams on the left. But um, if you go out into your apps, you'll also find Power Virtual Agents. So um, it's not, you know, it doesn't have our nice teal like our normal PVA would. Um, here on out, I'm going to reference Power Virtual Agents as PVA because Power Virtual Agents is a freaking mouthful. So um, <clears throat> PVA, um, you know, this is similar to Power Apps, pared down, but not by much. I mean, you know, uh, the, the channel you deploy this to is Teams. So uh, this really is for internal work streams, uh, HR teams, marketing teams, customer service teams, looking for answers, looking for guidance. Um, so when you when you first, you know, go, go to your apps, search for Power Virtual Agents, you'll see it, um, get it installed, get it good to go, uh, and pin that to your uh, team sitemap on the left here. But when you click into it, just like with any Power, uh, power platform, uh, you know, home screen, you're going to have learning uh, templates, things of that nature. But that's home. If I go over to my chat bots here, <clears throat> let's just start with a um, sort of a more traditional bot. Uh, and I'll show you a, a really quick way to get a bot going in like three, four or five minutes. So I've already got a in, an environment. So I, I built a bot or I built an app. The environment is here. We talked about that with Scott. So that stage has already been set. Um, but I do want to build a new chat bot for this team specifically. So I'll go to a new chat bot here at the top. And our use case here, let's just say it's like HR. So we're looking for um, annual re review information. We're looking for documentation, um, you know, enrollment benefits, etc. So I'm going to give this Called bot a Christine name. Said power bot. Power bot. Oh. Power. Power bot. Base bot. One word. I'm going to go with one word. But, but though they went to they went to a space. That's so all space. Um, let's let's, let's see if we can that break out. it. I'll, Scott will allow it. So it'll it, it'll provision here just like we would in PVA, but um, you know it's pretty snappy. It's plunking it in there. We're gonna get to our designer in a second. Um, and and just to kind of talk through a few things conceptually before we we jump in to our you know the fresh bot here. Um, bot design is so functional. Um, you know we we definitely get into pro code scenarios where we can you know call a flow and execute an action, retrieve data, do a number of uh, slightly more advanced pieces um, <clears throat> that are slightly more technical. But Power Virtual Agents, the, the intended audience really is the subject matter right. expert. So if, if you are that people team member, shout out Brianna, Kelsey, and everybody on our people team is amazing. Um, that is the audience for PVA. That, is the group of people who know the process, who can define it, give body to it, know where things should go, know what these responses are, all of And that's what PVA is designed to do. Azure Bot Framework, really where this came from, that's pro code, you know, building skills, integrating with other assistant technology, you know, going into language processing, the, the rabbit hole is deep. But this is for the, the business owners, the process owners, the stakeholders that don't know a lick of C Sharp. You know what I mean? So uh, it's for the owners. So this is a new bot um, on the left-hand side. Here we got our sitemap. Should look familiar if you've been in PVA before, but everything in PVA is built off of your topic and your topic is your conversation. It's your conversational path. If I ask about here, we've, you know, it comes preloaded with some store hours and products and what should I buy? And this comes with both the Project Oakdale and full true CDS PVA, so many acronyms. Yeah. Um, but what's really cool here is I can go in and start building one. And just to give you a breakdown, you know, here we've got, um, you know, buying items. And here we've got uh, store hours. Uh, when are you closed? Are there stores around? So more of like a geo-based question. If I go into one of these, just to give you a breakdown, um, <clears throat> we can go to the authoring canvas. It's at the very tip top top of the pyramid, hey, we've got our trigger phrases. So this is going to set the stage. This is going to tell the bot what you're actually, with intent, what you need to ask about, what you're going to be talking about with this virtual agent. So you can see at the top trigger phrases, um, there are five of them preloaded. I can go and edit those, add add new ones if I want to. Very simple and straightforward to do. But we're going to be met with a message and, you know, hey, um, which location are you interested in? And Microsoft serves up their, you know, sort of their uh, stomping grounds as a multiple choice. But we've got different attribute types and entities. Uh, in PVA, an entity really is almost kind of like an attribute when you're 
building in CDS. So you can see if I scroll down, we've got multiple choice or option set pick list. We've got age, city, color, continent. There are a number of these uh, entity types. Um, so a little bit of a verbiage shift, but you know, this is where we can, we can capture this stuff and then reference it later on in our conversation and we can make it more rigid. We can identify it. So there's a little bit of a metadata component to this to a degree, but this is just really easy to start working with. Um, and this is where I can build out, you know, you're interested in certain geographies. And if I choose Redmond, we're going to go down the Redmond path on the left. Um, if we, you know, choose Seattle, we're going down straight in the, in the center here. And it stores these responses. It stores what your user is is giving the, the, the chat bot <clears throat> as a variable. And when I, you know, I mentioned a minute ago, we can call on that. So um, as we move through our bot, the cool thing here is we've got a little test bot in the bottom left hand corner. And I can I can test it on the fly. So um, this is location where are you located? And I missed a, a space. That's fine. But you know it's it 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 has it, this uses the the full text API. You know so it's it's gauging not just the the raw content in text and ASCII characters and things like that, but um, also the 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 sentiment. You know, there's a sentiment analysis component to this too. So, you know, I choose Redmond and we're going to fly to the left-hand side, but we can QA as we build. This is awesome. Yep, you agree. know, we can we can see its performance as we go through. Now, if I wanted to build my own topic in this bot, you know, or build an HR bot, we can do that too. So if I go back to my topics. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Stream, you guys hearing me? You guys hearing me? Please don't tell me I'm having internet issues again. Please stream, respond. Anyone on chat? We can conceptualize and proof and go through the cycle. Um, but uh, we've got, what's that? Uh, you broke up a lot and I was like, did my hardware fail again? <laughs> no, oh you, gosh, no, I'm probably, I'm probably you're good. moving you, too You're wildly. good, you're good now. <laughs> um, so I can build things Thanks, from Dave, scratch Bill. and that's great, but um, if I go to a frequently asked questions page, I'm just going to scoop up this URL and thank you, Duke, for letting me use this a couple of times now. Um, we've got this suggested topics feature. So uh, if I wanted to just, if I have a frequently asked question page ready to go, I can go and grab that URL, plunk it in here, add that up. And what it'll do is analyze the, the tee up and the response. So that, that input and everything that the bot is going to give you back, um, you know, on a topic by topic basis. So it actually is, is, pulling all that data in, all that text in, and building these topics for us. So this basically gives us a ready-to-go HR bot. You know, if you've got this on your company page and you just you need to or you want to enable your internal users to uh, to use this technology to really, um, you know, offload if, if people are answering these questions regularly, if they're taking time out of their, you know, valuable minutes, hours, uh, days uh, at the end of the line of their time to answer questions, field these questions, go do, we can do, a bot can do it. So here we have our, our suggested topics. We got 22 of them. You can see that we've got our existing things here. Suggested topics, I'll click over to that. It's here, it's ready to go. Um, you know, I can go into this topic and I can I can actually sort of select. I can do all of them. Um, I, if I don't want a few of them in our bot, we can you know we can pick and choose what we want here. So this is just this is just really cool. Okay, I, you know to uh, to do yeah, this. Yeah. So let's say Christine, I love the visual representation that Power Apps brings to build logic uh intuitively rather than traditional code designing applications agreed right like the the hierarchies like the visual designer i mean i will say you know once you start getting really complex ones sometimes i wish i could just write it in code um you know because i've got some of mine that just expand out with it but typically it, it is a great design for it i guess one other thing i want to just interject adam is that you know you think about this i at stone ridge for example i i can never find where my 401k information needs to go or what website I need to go to. And I know we have it in Teams, but you know we've gone from SharePoint to Teams and who knows what the next technology will be with it. This to me is just awesome that you could actually have it where I could say, I could type in, I need 401k information. And then you know you could actually have, for example, um, the people team could, could email our 401k provider and get their frequently asked questions and then take that and then import it into the suggestions and basically build out content that we could interact with the chatbot to be able to get to that information. Definitely. 
Yep. So the repetitive tasks, you know, the the front end stuff. If I wanted to create one from scratch, from scratch here, I actually was capturing. We're gonna call this Wagnerbot, Wagnerbot nine thousand, <laughs> and we'll go ahead and create that. And along the way, uh, Ratty Wags, I was actually capturing some of your responses. <laughs> so, Bill, <laughs> thank you for the fantastic exactly. idea. So. You know, it's just it's just so easy. It's intuitive, just like what Scott had walked through with with Power Apps. You know, with the Project Oakdale Power App building, um, th there are a ton of ca uh, ca uh, caveats. Yeah, yeah uh, a lot of caveats, and and things to keep in mind as you're building, deploying, using this technology for sure. That's always going to be the case, really. But you know, especially with a, a 1.0 version here, um, but. The entry point is just, it's easy to pick up and go, you know? So if I wanted to build my Wagner bot here, now this is going from scratch. I'm not gonna pull in my frequently asked questions page to build my topics for me. If I wanted to build a new topic, I'll go and go to new topic at the top. And, you know, some intuitive responses here might, for this one, uh, what were some of Rob's only in my dreams? All right, so trigger phrase. Um, did you ever imagine power platform concepts in like 2012 this is not a good topic for any pva pros out there i know that they're like oh that's disgusting <laughs> i was gonna say um, that's loaded well let's let's but you want your topics to be broad enough to catch what you're actually looking for so like power platform can be oh and that was misspelled i'm gonna peel that one out but you know it, this is where we're, we're trying to to catch the right uh intent or write contents so a power platform dr dreams uh <laughs> did you imagine you know so we're trying to capture the essence of what people might Peel. be looking for so here are my tr trigger phrases um and you know this is where we start so uh dreams i'm just going to give that a name dreams that's great save the topic and now this is where i can actually go build my qa my 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 input and my response within that uh within that bot so you know if we want our rag uh, our our rad wagner bot to uh respond to those trigger phrases those inputs with, with what was it only in my dreams we'll just uh pull that one out of there and um Put it in, you know, in this, this I, we don't have enough time to really go through a full cycle here, but it, it's super easy. It's super fun. And, um, you know, we imagine that the the asterisks and those caveats we mentioned, um, those gaps will be bridged. And, you know, the, the product team at Microsoft has been awesome, especially with, with Power Platform tooling, D365 tooling, and, and just really keeping that lever pulled on innovating and, and, and pumping in new valuable features. So uh, we imagine that this will really come full circle here pretty, you know, pretty soon. Agreed. That's really cool. I mean, being able to build topics quickly. And then, like you said, you can add this then to anywhere, right? I mean, so, you know, how... Do, does does it add as a tab inside of a channel as well for it or um well it, you can see here i'm actually in chat so um it it, it actually it builds ah, okay. a, a chat recipient so here's our i had the power bot that we just did and this is actually the one um this is just an example of of one that i did before you know so this is where this is the user experience of PVA in Teams, you know, so it's it's really chat based yep, like this. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, Dave. So training a knowledge base is similar to training AI. That is correct. Key pair value, cause and effect, right? That's how we train AI and ML models. So exactly the same. Uh, Christine also mentioned similar to native language query with Power BI. Um, I'm assuming that's around the content for the uh, sentence it structures is. that are being added, it, right? The statements. It, it, it's all it's all Microsoft's. Um, I, I, I for any pros out there that might have more information, all all of this is actually coming from. It's a derivative of Bing. So you can imagine going to a search engine, people they have to understand not just raw text and data as an input, but intent and what are people looking for and language as a UI. So they have this Lui service, language understanding intelligence service, um, that really was the basis for a lot of the Azure Bot framework. And what I have to imagine is the basis for what we see here in PVA, what we see in uh, Power BI, and what we see in D365 marketing for that natural language input and searching and building. So I, the short answer I think is yes. Awesome, awesome. 
Cool. Well, I know we're getting to time, guys. Um, as always, thank you again for joining and, and kind of going through this with us. Um, we all love uh, tackling new technologies, obviously, and, and showing off what the capabilities are of the solution. Um, you know, at this point, in terms of our content for the next couple weeks, so um, I know we have uh, November 19th, and I'm going to leave this a little bit gray. We've got to talk internally a little bit about it. Project Oak Tree um, is a, a big topic that we wanted to cover, um, which really is around the engineering change management um, and the, all those advanced capabilities that were just announced and released um, with the newest version of uh, supply chain management. Um, and we wanted to go through that and show you that so um, that's one that's scheduled on november 19th and i will talk with their team to make sure we have that ready uh, and then it sounds like uh adam december 3rd uh live agents pva omni channel oh my like we're we're taking everything together right inside of this to be able to then show something so something pretty cool yeah um it's it, today was just yeah. a flavor of you know like a, that's going to be more much more enterprise how do we you know incorporate this and say maybe our call center deploy you know call center solution building or you know how can we empower our agents um with with chat monitoring and a number of different things that so that'll be that'll be a heck of a yeah lot. and i'd recommend am i, ahead, yep. I the, the yeah, yep. deliciousness i'm just it, it's behind my head and it might be reversed i don't know but it is but that's... um i didn't have i didn't have much to go on today but it's thursday critters out there it's going to be critical awesome. Critical role. Critical role. Exactly. So, guys, hopefully it gave you enough information today to go build something. If you're part of Stone Ridge, just go into a team, create a fake team, a private team, start using it. Like, start playing around with it. I know Adam and I are going to see a ton of different environments pop up. That would be a good thing. So, Noel, thank you for spearheading that and actually doing that even on stream. That was awesome to see. 